Hello everyone, so we're going to look at some commonly wrong answered uh, GCC maths questions. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these four questions, think about why people might get them wrong, and then we'll go for each one in turn as a bit of revision. Now, a lot of these, well, the first three are definitely to do with looking out for minus signs and thinking about when a minus is, well, it takes it away, or sometimes it's helpful to get it being attached to a number. So if we look at this expand and simplify one, pretty much everyone gets this first bit right. So expanding that with that and that with that. However, most people get this next part wrong. So this minus four, it might be helpful to think of it as being attached, that minus being attached to the four. So you have minus four times x and minus four times minus six. So when you're expanding brackets, think of the minuses almost as being attached when you're multiplying out. So that you can help you remember it. Because a lot of people don't, when they do the minus 6, they forget to times by minus 4, they just times by 4. Right. Yeah, here, this one, we used to have in equations where we've not got a minus in front of an x. So you've got something like 3x plus 5 is 8 or something. So this question, you're going to have to think about how to get rid of that minus, so how to deal with it. So that's the one people get wrong because they get confused with quite pretty quickly. And then this one, so it's solving, we've got, we've got what type of equation we've got here, we've got something of x squared in, that's when we call it a quadratic equation. And it says give your answer to three significant figures. That means we're using the quadratic formula. So, what do we need to solve a quadratic formula? First of all, you need to remember it, but we need our values for a, b and c. And again, you might think, so A is 2, B might say is 5, and C might say is 19. These would be wrong answers. Think about why. It's because we've got a minus in front of them. We have minus 5 and minus 19. They would be the correct values to then put into the formula. And then this last one, we've got an error interval. Okay, the reason why people get this wrong is we get confused when we're truncating or when we're rounding, which aren't the easiest things, but we've got to bear in mind the difference in what we do in each case. So we'll look at each question individually, but this is so you can have a think about when you're looking through exam papers and exam questions, why might I get this question wrong? It's a good sort of thing to think about. So if you see a minus, make sure you pay attention to it, because often that's the reason why people drop marks in exams, look out for certain words like truncate or round, don't get those mixed up. So being aware of what type of common traps there are is really helpful in terms of your revision. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got to expand and simplify those brackets. So as we just said, the problem with this one is that minus in front of the four. So thinking about them being sort of attached together. So let me just write this out. So I've got three times two X minus one minus 4x minus 6 and I've wrote that minus quite close to the 4 so then I'm sort of thinking about them being together okay so 3 times 2x that would give me 6x 3 times minus 1 again think about that being sort of together so that's going to be 3 times minus 1 which is minus 3 and here I've got minus 4 times x that's minus 4x minus 4 times minus 6 or minus times a minus that's going to be a plus okay so if we've got two things that are of the same size so you've got a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus the answer in both cases is a plus if you've got things with different signs so if i've got a plus times a minus or a minus times a plus the answer in both cases is going to be a minus just note that these rules, however, only refer to when we're multiplying. Okay? So a plus times a plus is a plus. A minus times a minus is also a plus. Okay? These rules only work when we're multiplying. It's different if you're adding or subtracting. So I think you usually think about a number line and the size of the values in that case. So this is the expand part. Okay, we now need to do the simplified part, so collect like terms, 6x, take away 4x, that's just 2x, minus 3 plus 24. Okay, what might help you there is to think about swapping them around, so that's 24 take away or plus minus 3, which is the same as 24 take away 3, which is going to be 21, that's a positive value, 
So we have plus 21 there. Okay, so being very careful with that original, uh, with any minus signs that you see, and remembering these sort of key rules when we're multiplying uh, positive and negative numbers together. Right, so this one I pointed out that comp pitfall is going to be this minus in front of the 2x. Now, there's a few different ways that we can handle it, and well, I think one's particularly easier, but if you're more comfortable with in the positives and negatives, then the other one will also be fine. So, if I'm starting off with 21, take away 2x is 15. Okay, let's say I don't want really want that minus, okay, because it's going to confuse things. What's the opposite of taking away 2x? Well, it's to add 2x, and I've got to do that to both sides. So, on the left, these things will disappear. So, opposites, they can add up to 0. So, I'll be left with 21 here. On this side, I've got 15 plus 2x. Okay, now I can think about trying to solve. You might be able to just see what the value is, but it's always good to think out what methods that you would do. So, another thing that might help is adding, doesn't matter which order I add the things. Okay, so 2 plus 3, same as 3 plus 2, so 15 plus 2x, the same as 2x plus 15. So, what's the opposite of adding 15? would be to subtract 15. Okay, what we're left with, we're left with 6 here. They add up to 0, so they go away. So I'm left with 2x. So then you can figure out what's the opposite times by 2. Divide by 2. 6 divided by 2 equals x. 6 divided by 2, of course, is just 3. So that's one way of dealing it, which I think is much easier and you're less likely to fall into the traps. However, you can also do it this way. So let's think about just how you might normally solve an equation. Let's get rid of the numbers. So let's take away 21 from both sides. Now, what am I left with on this side? That makes zero when I add them together. But I'm, so I'm left with minus 2x. And 15 take away 21. Well, 21 is bigger, so we're going to have minus. And it's going to be minus 6. Okay. And then how do I get from minus 2x to x? Well, I could divide by minus 2. Let's do the same there. So I've got to do minus 6 divided by minus 2. Now, a bit like the rules for division are the same as the ones for multiplying in terms of the sign. So I'll minus divided by minus the plus. 6 divided by 2 is 3. The answer is 3. Or plus 3, they're both the same. So both methods give you the same answer. However, this one you do have to be comfortable with can you divide by minus 2 on both sides. Whereas the other one, you make it positive, so it ends up becoming a bit more easier. Okay, but so pick a method that you feel more comfortable with and that you understand, try and stick with that. But common question people get wrong is we've got a minus in front of the letter, in which case you want to get rid of it. Probably the easiest method by doing the opposite adding it to both sides. Right, so I mentioned in this case, we've got a quadratic equation, that means we've got an x squared as our highest power of x. And we've got three, it says give your answer three cent figures, that's a big clue to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so I remember the song, so the formula was x is equal to negative b plus the minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over two way. So that gives us our formula, remember it that way. And then we need to work out what a, b, and c are all going to be. So a is what's in front of x squared, that'd be 2. b is what's going to be in front of minus five, uh, in front of x, which is minus 5. c is going to be the number of its own, which is minus 19. Remembering those minuses, or it will go wrong. And then we've got two things to put in our calculator. We're going to put in when this is a minus, and also when it's a plus. So I'll do the minus first. So minus b, make sure putting it in brackets. So we've got two minuses. We've got a minus from the actual formula itself, and then we've got another minus because it's b is equal to minus 5. Then b squared, again, put it in brackets. Minus 5 squared, minus 4. What's a? It's 2. Put it in brackets. What's c? It's minus 19. Put it in brackets. And make sure you divide in everything by 2a, not just the little fraction part. 
2 times 2. Put that into your calculator. We then also have to do the plus bit, which on your calculator we're just going to change that minus to a plus to get here. Alright, let's go over that bit. So I'm going to write it out, but on your calculator you could just replace it. So it's a good exercise to try and make sure that you can do this. Type this into your calculator accurately and get the values that I'm going to put up shortly. So values that we would get, we want it to three different figures. So I'd get minus 2.0760 and 4.5760. That's not to three significant figures. But let's just roughly get the calculator, that's a 7, that's a really badly done 5. So, what are the values going to be? So, the first significant figure is the first digit that's not 0, and then you count from then on. So, this one will be the first one, this one will be the second, that one's going to be the third. And when we're talking about three significant figures, we are talking about rounding. So, minus 2.0. The next one's bigger than 5, so this goes up to 8. And this one, first significant figure, second one, third one. This one's also going to go up 4.58 to 3 sig figs. And give us the SF, which means significant figures. So that's another common pitfall. What other people tend to struggle with, apart from getting the minuses, are if the equation's in a slightly different order. So if I had written this, um, let's say I've written it in this form. Okay, all these equations that I'm going to write now would have the same answers. Okay, because they've got the same number in front of each letter. Okay, so it doesn't matter which order I write it. It's always easy if you write it x squared then x then the number on its own equals zero, it has to equal zero or else it doesn't work. But it doesn't matter which order they're written in, so a is always what's in front of x squared. In every single case, number in front of x squared is a plus positive two, so just write two. If you look at b minus five, in every case the number in front of x is minus five. So all those equations would also have the same answers. So it's really careful to make sure you get which values of a, b and c are. And then that you're also getting the minuses in if you need to. And then putting it in the calculator in the correct format. Make sure you've added everything. That you've got both roots. And then that you round it to whatever accuracy it asks for. So there's a lot involved in those questions. Right, so this one we've got about an error interval. So that's when we're writing x. And we're going to write if it's bigger or equal to something. We might have an equal to. We'll think about that shortly. But that's what these questions are. Okay. And we've got a truncate. So truncate always means round down. Truncate is equal means round down. Okay, so if I was, and then so let's compare it with rounding. If I were rounding two numbers, let's say I've got, that's a bit four because that's what we've got. Let's say we've got 2.87, 2.85, 2.82. I want to round them to one decimal place. Well, this one's going to be 2.9. Okay, because this number here is bigger than 5, but well, this number equals 5, we round it up. This number is less than 5, so this rounds to 2.8. If I was talking about truncating to one decimal place, it would all be 2.8. You, you ignore that rule of what the next number is, you just round it down anyway, you just stop the number at the first decimal place. And that's what truncating is. Okay, so when we did error intervals for rounding, we had sort of three steps to go about. So it was work out what the accuracy or the resolution is. Second bit would then be to halve it, and then it would be add and subtract. Add and subtract. I don't know. From the measured value, so the value that we've got here. That would be if we were rounding, because we are truncating. What we do is, well, we don't actually half the accuracy. So that's first of all, we've got the accuracy would be. Well, it's two decimal places. 
So that's going to be 0 0.01. That'll be what our accuracy is, our resolution is. Now, if anything, if I had 4.49 and I was truncating it, sorry, let's put it. If I had 4.549 and I was truncating it, it would always round down, so it would always truncate down 4.54 as I was truncating. So with truncating, the lower bound is always a number, and the upper bound you just add on the accuracy. So 4.55. Plus 0.01, that's going to give us 4.56, that's our upper bound. So truncating is almost easier in some sense, it's value, the actual value you started with, then you add on whatever degree of accuracy it was into that value to get your upper bound. Okay, it's actually lower bound, that's your upper bound. Now we want to figure out, can it equal them? This one of course it can, because 4.55 to two decimal places, if you round it or truncate it, it's 4.55. However, it can't equal this because that will truncate to 4.56. The next one we don't have equal to there. So the error interval is this here. Okay. If if the question said, if we were talking about rounding, you would then go through three steps of so accuracy, half it, and then subtract. So you get 4.545. 4.555. Okay, and which one do we equal? We equal that one because that'll round up. So that was that would be if we were rounding it. We do those three processes. If we're truncating, keep the first value for low bound, add the accuracy for the upper bound, that's it you're done. And the inequalities match up in the same way as well.